Hello everyone, my name is Sarah Manon. And my name is Ariana Brancato. And we're Spanish students in a class that talks about food and the cultural impact across many different nations and countries. And for one of our projects, we wanted to talk about the arepa. So we're gonna dive right on into that. Um, so an arepa is a cross between a pancake and a tortilla, and it's really popular in Central and Southern America. But yeah, so now Ariana's gonna take it away. So the preparation of the arepa has actually come a long way over time. Um, back way before 1950, it actually began with um, people taking corn, which is widely available in Venezuela, um, which is we're focusing on the Venezuelan arepa. And so people would take corn and dry it out themselves and make their own flour with it. Um, but then after 1950, um, pre-made corn flour became really popular and that's a really popular brand that we included at the bottom that can be found in basically any store now and so after the pre-made flour became available people started to make arepas everywhere around the world and it didn't become such a process of drying out your own corn and things like that and so now arepas are popular worldwide and made each and every day in homes around the world so um, prior to the pre-made corn, like I said, there was a lot of different preparations. So I'll just briefly talk about how they were made in um, different formats. Um, so the first one is just with the pre-made flour. It's very easy and fast, and it's made mostly in the home um, for different types of meals. Um, basically anything can be put inside, which we'll go into later, um, but it's just a very simple preparation. Um, this preparation is with corn that is actually taken from the cob and then it's boiled, um, dried out, and it has like a little bit of salt in it. And it's um, through the process, process of nixtamalization, which is just this way of taking the corn. And as you can see, it has a really different look to it than the first one did. Um, the arepa andina is a very different preparation because it uses wheat flour instead of corn flour. So this is definitely different because like I've said, corn was the main just the main point of this dish. And so this definitely takes on a different texture and it looks really different as you can see, it's a lot more delicate. Um, and this is the last preparation we'll talk about, but it's the arepa uh, made from yuca, which yuca is more like a potato. So as you can see, it looks kind of like, uh, like mashed potatoes almost. Um, and it's really this is really popular in the Amazon region um, where they use yuca more often. Um, but today, there's a, a short list in Spanish of how you would prepare the arepa, but I'll go through with pictures just so that it's more straightforward. Um, you would take two cups of the corn flour, you'd mix it with water and a little bit of salt and butter if you want, and then you'd mix it up, let it sit for five minutes, and then cook them on either the grill or the stove. So really easy and can be made for any kind of meal. Um, so a lot of popular preparations, you could put eggs inside, beans and cheese, meat, avocados, ham and cheese, pretty much anything. They can be eaten for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. You can make them for dessert. Um, so just a very versatile dish. So now that we've kind of talked about how to prepare arepas, let's dive in a little bit more into the history. So um, the word arepa, there's two different scholars kind of go back and forth on where it comes from. So some language scholars say that the arepa comes from the indigenous word um, arepa, which uh, the Cuman Kumanagato tribe used. Uh, the Kumanagato tribe was um, a tribe in northern Venezuela and they were around until the 17th century. Um, however, according to another, um, another version, the word arepa comes from aripu, which is a slightly curved plate made of mud and many indigenous people use that for cooking their cornmeal dough. And so, well, we don't really know where the word comes from. Um, we also don't really know who first invented it either. So um, it's a, both a fundamental basis in the Venezuelan and Colombian diet, um, but there's a kind of a silent debate or struggle between the two countries of who invented it. Um, so it's kind of hard to determine the origins of the arepa because at one point, um, the history of the continent, both countries shared a territory um, and indigenous tribes shared similar lands. So, we, it's hard to tell who's responsible for the creation um, when it was scattered throughout the land. And then 
Um, however, so once the territory split and um, tribes went to uh, different countries split, um, also the way that the Arepa was consumed was divided as well. So Venezuela is uh, famous for um, a lot of different filled stuffings and different names for the Arepa, and they're usually eaten all throughout the day, while the Colombian Arepa um, is usually only ate with uh, queso or eggs, and it's usually only um, eaten during breakfast or as an afternoon snack. Um, so onto the cultural significance, um, the indigenous people actually created the arepa, but it's extended throughout the whole world now. I mean, it actually began with indigenous women like chewing the corn with their teeth to make the dough for it. Um, but now, as this quote says, and this is actually the title of our whole presentation, Somos Maiz, um, but it's more than just a like form of bread made of corn. They it says they are corn, we eat corn. Um, and this isn't just like a little part of Venezuela, it's become a huge part of their cultural significance and really guided a lot of who they are um, through this one food It's had just such a great impact. Um, and as we can see with um, Miguel Angelo, it, he's a Venezuelan artist who lives in the United States now, but he makes arepas every day, almost <laughs> a few times a week to just stay really connected with um, just his home country and the Venezuelan culture. Um, and so it's really spread throughout the world. It's become a popular dish um, by just people experiencing it and sharing the recipes with their friends and family. Um, and so it's just become something very um, known for Venezuela throughout the world. Um, and finally, just to end our presentation, we have one last quote, although it's in Spanish, just to summarize it, it says that um, the arepa becomes something that's eaten in many different forms in the night, in the day, whatever it is. Um, but it's also something where people can share their traditions, their passions, and I, a diversity all through this one food. And so really just a lot lies within the arepa. Um, so in conclusion, arepas are as diverse as the people who make them. Um, they come from many different backgrounds, many different people, many different preparations. Um, but at the end of the day, they all serve as a connection back to the country of Venezuela. Um, and thank you so much for listening to our presentation. We would love to answer any questions you have about it um, during the roundtable we'll have. Thank you. Thank you.